G'day guys and welcome to G-Man Specs. Today I'm going to touch on a topic that a few people have asked me about and that is dating foreign women in foreign countries. So today I'm going to talk you through um, a bit of a horror story this gentleman is sharing. He runs his own channel called Buzz in Pattaya. He seems to be the expert on these things because I haven't done that. I haven't gone and dated women in foreign countries so I'm not an authority on that but I'm going to make some comment um, on this guy's story because he goes into a lot of detail. So enjoy. Hey guys, how we doing? Welcome to another chat show here on the channel and uh, to today's video. Uh, okay, so a few days ago, I made a video about the perils of getting involved in girls and what to expect and how it can go wrong and all those kind of things. And the comments that I got back were really, really interesting because a lot, as you know, I read every comment. And some are saying, oh, you guys are just dumb asses. you're stupid. If you get involved with the girls, you're asking for trouble. And, you know, I'm not going to disagree with you. I really am not. And as I'm going <laughs> to share with you today. Yeah. But, it but, yeah, I'm not saying they're dumb asses and stupid, but you're walking into it, right? Because I think my view is if you're going over to a foreign country, especially where there's, um, you know, a, a strong history of middle age to more elderly people from developed countries going there to meet younger women, you're setting yourself up as an absolute mark. And these these chicks over there, you know, you think the women over here are bad. You think the women over here uh, size you up, um, you know, and my, they might do that from a natural perspective that is built into them. These chicks in the other countries, that's their livelihood. Like, that's what they have to do to survive. Um, and so you're putting yourself in the firing line, especially going to Patea and places like that, some places in the Philippines, and it's all the same, right? Bali getting on with these chicks and then getting absolutely fucked over. Chicks from the Ukraine, I've seen stories about that. You know, so you guys tell me what sort of nationality do you want me to touch on? I reckon I can play fine some horror stories for you guys that we can talk through. But this is going to happen. So you need to keep your eyes open no matter where you go. A lot of guys, um, the Passport Bros thing, um, I can understand why guys want to do that, but I think they are a bit, little bit naive in, in what they might be expecting in all cases because I think there's just as much chance of them getting wiped out over there is what they are over here or someone really doing them over um that's my opinion right i've heard about things happening to two guys who have done that so it's not just a, a horror story so yeah let's just listen to this guy i won't i won't bat in that much it's very very easy to say it and it's very hard to do it and i'm going to explain my story and the reason i'm going to do this i've had quite a few people say to me trev you know you had a really catastrophe a catastrophic catastrophic uh, relationship when you first came out here would i share that the actual real story rather than just glossing over it and i thought well okay let's do it i've got i've got nothing to hide i'm not worried about it so a bit of background information for you first i've been through a messy divorce i'd had two years bumbling around in the uk uh, financially i was sound I had a good business everything was all in place i had no real worries but uh, but inside i was eating myself up i was surrounded by her family because i lived in the same area and you know things were just not really good for me so i decided as you know i already suffered with depression so i decided to start doing a bit of traveling and get myself away from the from the area and i came to thailand and against popular belief I actually had no idea about the girl scene here. I genuinely didn't. I came to Thailand because I love sure, spicy food and obviously Thai food. I love the heat, obviously the Thailand's temperatures, and I just wanted to go to a big city. So I went to Bangkok. I left a big city to go to a big city. It made perfect sense to me. And that's that's what I've always done. I've been to New York and all the big cities. Are, that's my thing. Anyway. I came over here and I had a fantastic time. I really did. And, and I've, I've shared that with you about how I found uh, Coast Smooth and I found Patea. And it was like, oh, wow, never understood any of this was here. But nevertheless, that's a different story. But I went back home and I thought, you know what? This, this country has really got under my skin. This country is, a, is somewhere I know I could live and I'll be very, very happy. So I put measures in place. I spoke to my young children and I said, look, you know, dad wants to, to do some things for himself. And they were all like, no problem, dad, you know, you do what you got to do kind of thing. And I made the choice to come out. Now, I didn't just get up and come out. I did have a job to come to. So I was quite lucky. So I moved over here. And, you know, the one thing that you got to keep here is you got to keep it real. Because every day is a Saturday night and you can party 24-7. You really can. And of course, you know, you're surrounded by beautiful women. And yes, a majority of the girls here in the city are working girls, but there's still an element of non-working girls. Uh, but, you know... Yeah, and, I, and I've heard of that. I've heard of guys getting over there meeting, um, 
you know, women from, you know, middle class families have good jobs, corporate jobs over there. But what I've also heard is they're quite racist. They stay to their own. Um, and it's mostly these bar girls that this guy's talking about, uh, working girls um, in the tourist destinations are the ones that are going for, for gentlemen like himself. So I'm sure it happens. It's like anything. It happens. People go over. They're successful. Um, it's like over here in Australia or America, you know, people have happy marriages as well. Right? <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, I think your chances are pretty, pretty slim. Around the country, you are just surrounded by literally tens of thousands of beautiful women and i happen to like asian women as well so that was a massive plus for me loves it so when i came over here i was very uh settled I, you know financially i was okay everything was good no problems there was nothing i could see in the future that would be of, of any real issue well a good friend of mine a guy called nick who lives down in wahin uh he messaged me one day and said trev he said uh, i found this gents club in Pratanak. How about we go check it out? I said, yeah, that sounds a good idea, mate. Let's do that. And at the time when we were talking, he was up here and just uh, finding his feet because he was, uh, well, he was moving over as well. So we, he was here for quite a while. And we went into this club. It was a, it's where the uh, PBRE real estate company is now. It's above that. It was a pool villa. And when I went in there, I met this girl, and she just, oh man, she just ticked every box. You know, stunningly beautiful. She was young. I mean, at this time, I was what forty one. No, what was I then? I was 40. Come on, dude. Like, what do you think's going to happen? Come on, let, 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 let's not play stupid. You know what you're doing there? And you think an 18-year-old or 20-year-old super hot chick's going to be interested in you. Like, let's just, come on. Come on, let's be real. Like, no shade of this guy. I think it's awesome. He's telling a story. He's got a very successful channel. He's got over 100K subs. So good on him. Go check him out. Buzz and Patea. But come on. What? Oh, I didn't know what was happening. Oh. 22, sorry. And uh, she was 23, so it was a 20 year age yet, but that didn't really have a problem. She was great fun, had a bubbly personality, smiling, pretty, funny, good jokes, you know, it was everything was just really all falling into place. You're a mark, dude. And you know, you never ever, I never came out here expecting to find a relationship. It was not on my radar whatsoever. I came out here for some me time. I'm quite happy being on my own, I'm quite happy traveling on my own. I'm a very kind of like individual person. I don't need to be in a big crowd to feel comfortable. So we started spending some time together and it was just all like, you know, you think, oh, you know, she's really nice and all the signals were just coming in and you know what it's like, like before you know it, you're just swept away in the emotion of the, of the situation. And I got swept away. I said to Nick, I said, mate, I said like, oh man, she's just so good. And bear in mind, I'd had a two year, very difficult breakdown in my marriage. So for me to now have the opportunity where there was a, a young beautiful woman in front of me that wanted to spend time made me laugh made me feel like i was something special just ticked all my boxes it was really very easy for me to fall into the into the uh, into love and to fall into this trap i said he's a mark like you're a mark and, and, and these guys go over there and that's why guys oh yeah i'm gonna go over here and i go to the philippines and find myself a traditional wife who's gonna stay in there yeah, mate you're, you're paying for it dude so whether you pay for it here or you pay for it there um you might get some more feminine treatment over there sure but you think you're just going to be a magical fairy tale land over there? This is my opinion, guys. You can, you know, you can challenge me in the comments. It doesn't matter where you go. You want to deal with women. Uh, you're paying in some way, whether it's at the front or the back. Uh, you're going to be paying the piper. <laughs> so, I was walking into. So, where did it all go wrong? Well, what we did was uh, I had to pay. I had to pay the club ten thousand baht. For in order for her to stop working, I actually look back now and I think that was a bit of a bit of a scam, to be honest. And I don't yeah, even no know shit. if she gave them the money to be true. I don't even know if they asked for the money. But anyway, that's what I paid. And you know, like I say, financially this wasn't an issue. It was just you know, it was short, small change for me. So I just gave her the ten thousand baht, and she came to move in with me. Now I lived in Soy Siam country at the time. I had a pool villa uh, up the uh, road near the bend up by Mapachan Lake, and uh, she stayed with me. And things were Hang on, so you get some chick from a bar, you pay 10,000 baht, I don't know how much that is, I think in Australia that's a few thousand bucks, and then she moves into your house. What do you think's going to happen, dude? <laughs> Every day these guys get taken for a ride. Every day, and I think it's good he's sharing his story, but, and he's been open about it. A lot of guys will just be really embarrassed about it or go and do it again. But he's made a channel out of it through his experiences, but Jesus, come on great you know really really good and then she said to me oh how about we go see my family now our family live up in some debt and i'd never been up there that's right up by uh Seconda Con, so i went all the way up there 
And yeah, of course, you are the novelty. You are the, hey, look at the Falang here. And uh, there, was, there was quite a good uh, Falang community up there already. So I was able to speak to people because I spoke no, no uh, Thai then. Um, so it was, I was able to mix in with the community and, and it was good. It was really good. And then we came back and, and we did a few more trips. And then I said to one, I said, look, what are you going to do? Because you, know, you can't just sit around all day, every day. You know, you're, you're far too young for that. You need to get out and do things and experience life. And so what we did, well, we set up a milkshake shop. A milkshake shop. Uh, now, if you know where Soy Siam Country is, there's another road that runs parallel called Numpak One. And there's a, an adjoining road, uh, which is right by the school, by the, the, what used to be the uh, Patea United Football Ground. And there's a, there used to be a small police uh, office there, which is gone now. Uh, I think it's now it's a big C, I believe. Uh, but that was the police. Yeah. Anyway, there were some uh, properties available behind, which we turned one of them into a milkshake shop. And I have to give her a due. She worked really, really hard. She really did. And she was successful. To the point that we then went and got another shop, a milkshake shop stroke restaurant this time, in uh, Soy Nun Pak Wan. So we had two places. And they were going really well. No problems whatsoever. Everything was going good. And we kept going back home to Somdet and, you know, things were really well, you know, it was just, it was just a breath of fresh air for me as an individual. So we went up to Somdet one day and I just started looking around. I thought, you know what, there's not a single milkshake shop up here that, you know, would replicate what we're doing down here. And the majority of her customers were the kids and the parents, because obviously the kids coming out of school, mum, can I get a milkshake? Away you go, job done. And there's a big school in Somdet, right on the main road, big, big school. So we managed to get a restaurant right near the school and we set up a shop and it did really well. It was brilliant. So we decided to make the move from Patea up to Somdet and I'd, t I'd lose all my ties here. So we shut both the restaurants down and we moved up there and everything was going well. Then came the next one, which was the house. So we were riding around, there's a lot of fields out there, and we, and we found this small, it was eight houses they were building. Beautiful houses, really lovely houses. I'm going to stop it there. So, so I've, I've actually um, heard about a lot of this stuff. So they'll get um, the person that they're with to buy them assets in their name, so in, in, the, in the Thai lady's name or in the, in the Thai family's name. Because he's a foreigner, he's got no claim over to the money and the assets that he's paid for. So he essentially gets scammed out of his cash. Um, so he, she's obviously getting milk, milkshake shops um, and businesses set up on his coin. He's probably bankrolling them, bankrolling um, all the costs, expenses and stuff like that. Making a presumption here, but that sounds to me because it sounds like she's a working girl from the bars from a poor um, rural area. That's where all those bar girls come from. Um, and then, so the thing here he's going to talk about, I've heard about this too, is they, um, they get you to buy land. Uh, and then build houses for the family, and the family cry poor, and you got to build a house for the family, but it goes into the family's name, and then at some point, they pull the trigger, fuck you off, and you've bought the whole family a house, you've built them a new house, and land and everything, and you know, it's and cars and all sorts of shit. I'm sure he's going to get to that. I just thought I'll jump in. So they were building these houses, and I thought, you know what, that's lovely. So I started inquiring, so how much is the, is the full build? And they were 3.7 million. Now, when you, when you look at the cost of housing here, when you look at the cost of housing in the rural villages, you get, honestly, if you saw my house, it was a big uh, three, three bedroom detached house uh, in a rye of land with a, a surrounding wall, huge, huge building. It was beautiful, all with big balconies on the, on the uh, bedrooms. It was just beautiful. And I looked at that and I thought, you know, I could buy that. So I bought the house. So then we went from moving out from, we moved out of the hotel, like we were staying like a long time uh, hotel. We could stay there every month and pay your money. It was paying about 6,000 baht. So I bought this house. The house was 3.7 million. I bought the house, job done. Now we got a house. And of course I had a car, had a motorbike, even got two dogs. And uh, everything was, was, was all good. Everything was falling into place, no, no drama. Sorry, that's, yes I did. Yeah, I did have August then. Sorry, I thought I got August then. No, I had August then as well. So, I'm in a world now where I've got a successful business for my wife, whether she wasn't my wife, my girlfriend. I've got a nice lifestyle. Everything was fine. Everything was good. It was all happy days. And then we decided that we would open a restaurant. Now, if you go into some debt, you'll know that there's a, there's a main road goes right the way through, up the mountain into Secondacom. And so we got a restaurant right on the, on the edge, right on the uh, side of the road there, massive. It was, uh, it was probably a good, I'd say it's probably about 80 meters long by about, 20 meters wide it was a big big restaurant and we built this restaurant and all her family came to work for us 
And we did well, we did okay. Everything was good because it was a, it was the only way of getting over the mountains. So we had a huge amount of passing trade, and because we had such a big area, parking was not an issue. So we were doing really good. And we decided to close down the shop by the milkshake shop. Uh, we tried getting a few of our family members to run it for us, but they were just hopeless. They spent most of the time sleeping. So it was just a case of let's just close that down. We'll, we'll work on that restaurant. So you've got a picture now. I'm happy as Larry, everything's good, we're making money, we've got a beautiful house, nice car, bike, all the rest of it. Everything is as, as well as you could expect. Everything was ticking all the boxes. All and right, guys, I'm just going to stop him there because it sounds like he's going to get the rug pull. So, so before we get halfway through, uh, we are halfway through. So please uh, sub to the channel if you haven't subbed already, aiming to get 7K subscribers. Uh, if you do want to support the channel, watch the vi uh, videos through to the end, guys. It really helps me out, the watch time. Um, I never try and sell you anything. So just the watch time is very, very much valued. If you do want to support the channel further, check out the Patreon in the link. And uh, pin comment is in the um, video description as well. Cheers. And then suddenly it started changing. And over a period of time, like activity in the bedroom was getting less and it wasn't my doing. Uh, she was becoming more moody, more grumpy, and things were like really not progressing very well. And I couldn't understand it because we had a we had a fantastic life. You know, from where she's come from to what she had was incredible. But it seemed or it certainly appeared at the time it just wasn't working, it wasn't right. And this carried on for a while now. And I got to a stage where I thought, you know what, this isn't good. And I tried to talk to her, and anybody that's been in a Thai relationship will, will understand what I say about the silent treatment. You speak to them and they just won't talk. They just will not talk. And then when they don't talk, they just go quiet. And it's like mind blowing, it really is. It's just like, my God, will you please just tell me what's wrong? And I couldn't get nothing out of her, really couldn't get nothing out of her. So basically psychological abuse, man. It doesn't matter where you're from, if uh, they're gonna switch off, that's what happens. So this guy is giving up everything. He's got everything locked in, restaurants, houses, cars. All that sort of stuff. He's looked after the family, given them all jobs. Now she's gone, cool, milked you for what you're worth. And I'm shut and shop. Great. So we then got into a situation where I thought, well, do you know what? I can't handle it. So I came back here. I came down here for a couple of weeks, gave her some space, went back up there. And again, you know, it just, just didn't improve. So in the end, I thought, right, I've had enough now. I'm going to move out. So I said, do you know what? I've, I'm done now. I can't take this. I said, I'm going to go back. I said, I'll work in Patea. And uh, I, I just can't be doing it. I said, it really isn't working for me. And she didn't bat an eyelid. She just didn't bat an eyelid, which I thought was quite weird because I was kind of hoping, I was hoping, if I'm being honest, that she said, oh, no, don't go. Like, you know, we'll sort things out. But that didn't happen. No, nah, dude, you're the mark. She wanted you gone. She extracted money. Golden Goose has given up the eggs. Don't need you no more, buddy. Set you free. But and then what, what uh, happened was I packed all my bag. Well, I packed the day bag because I was always traveling backwards and forwards here because remember, I'm a photographer here. So I'd come down, do two weeks of photography, go home two weeks, come down two weeks, sorry, go home two And it was working perfectly. And I just thought, no, nah, I've done now. So I said to her, I'm off. So I got my bag and I was walking out the door and I thought, you know what? She hasn't even said like, don't go, didn't even say goodbye. <laughs> And I, and I did, I got upset and angry about it. And I said, you know what? I said, I've given you this, blah, 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 blah. And you haven't got even the decency to say, don't go or, you know, goodbye, nothing. I said, is that really how it is? And she got quite emotional. And I said, I said, why are you crying? She said, oh, it doesn't matter. I said, well, no, it does matter. I want to know, like, why are you crying? You know, you're the one that's the shutting this down. And now you're suddenly like, you're upset. What's that about? And she said, well, if you must know, I've got cancer. Now, as you can imagine, when you drop a bombshell like that, it blew me apart, even more so, because what had also happened, and she was very aware of this, was that I lost a very, very dear friend, a uh, very, 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 very dear friend. And um, I lost him, and, and it hurt. It hurt. hurts even now, talking about it. And she used that as a, as a, as a final blow, could you call it. So the point where I, I was just mortified, and I said, look, have you had treatment? You know, what's going on? Can I, can I take you to the hospital? Said, Please, you know, let's sort this out. And bear in mind, I spoke very, very little Thai, so I couldn't understand hardly anything. And we, I took her to ho some very, I took her to hospital in, uh, oh, where did we go? We went to Udon Thani, we went to Kong Ken, uh, we went to Specialist Hospital, and, and every time I had to sit outside while she went inside. And Fucking just playing him, dude. That is ruthless. That is cold. Like, she knew that, and then she's used that to pull a heartstring to get more out of the guy. Far out.
And I was, to this day, I never ever knew what, what they even spoke about, to be honest with you, because it turned out, in the end, in the long run, it turned out that she was lying. She didn't even have cancer. Ruthless. And it was her sister that told me. Her sister was really, it was funny with her sister. Her sister was like, me and her had a love-hate relationship, and I don't know why. Uh, she had a really nice Falang boyfriend. He was a great guy, and I, I assume they're still together to this day. I don't know. But it was her that told me. She said, look, Trevor, she said, I know we don't get on, but I'm going to tell you now, she's lying to you. And I was like, what do you mean she's lying? She said, no, she's lying. She hasn't got cancer. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, seriously? Like, having been through what I've been through to then take me through what we're going through now and to then tell me that that's a lie? And that was that. That was the final straw. That was it. So I confronted her. She didn't really admit it, but she said, oh, I think I'm better now. And I was just like, do you know what? We're <laughs> And so, of course, you're now in a situation where I've got a house, land, car, motorbike, dogs. Royally fucked. That's where you are. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. It's like they, they get these guys. They play the heartstrings. They know how to play the game. They're, they're trained by their grandmothers and mothers and stuff how to do this shit. So, guys, you're asking me, should I go over there and meet women? Sure, try and be careful. But you just don't know what you're getting, right? Because you're a mark. You're a target. You think you're going to go over there. You're a normal middle-aged guy here. You're not doing very well with the ladies. All of a sudden, you're over there. You get all this attention. What, you think you're Tom Cruise over there? It's like, no. They they know what they're looking for. They know what they're going to do. And you're a target. So I know it sounds negative and cynical. But this guy is literally telling you. I've watched heaps of videos like this. I've heard about guys getting ripped off. And I'm sure it happens, guys. You can strike you can strike gold over there as well. <laughs> but I think you're more likely to get screwed over hard. I've got everything. You know, we furnished it, beautiful furnishings. And I just walked away. Because when you start these situations, when you start these relationships, you know, the land is never my, mine anyway. The house is on her land, if you yep. want to look at it like See? that way. So again, you're pretty much powerless. The car was in her name. Uh, because we, I bought it, I pay for it, just put it in her name. And I know, I look back now, I think, oh, why'd you do that? But, you know, it's sometimes we just do it because we want an easy life. Yeah, just put it in your name, so it doesn't matter. You're not going anywhere, are you? Let's be honest. It's not like you're going to tell me you've got cancer when you haven't and try and mug me off. You'd never do that to me, would you? Yeah. So. It's very similar to what guys do here. Like, like I've been through it as well. Like, you got assets or you got money and you're worried about it. But you don't want to rock the boat and ask for a prenup or ask for a, fin a financial agreement before you go in a BFA because, hey, you're getting married or you're moving in together, right? Like, what's going to go wrong? They're not going anywhere. They're with you. They're your girl. You just don't think. You wouldn't even think. You don't want to think those things would happen to you. So you can see where he's coming from. Now you can start to see where everything's starting to fall into place. And I came back here. I, I moved back here. And it was very difficult because I was gutted if I'm being honest not more so about the fact that, that our relationship had gone pear-shaped but more about the, the, the cancer side of it that to me was evil yeah and because of that situation no matter how much had we have even thought about getting back together again I would never have done it and you know she lied to me and used some very vile uh, ways to lie things to lie about with the cancer knowing how much it had upset me with the loss of my friend and that was it, really. That was where we were. And I lost everything. I lost the house. The car, in the end, she wrote the car off. She went up, we had a big university in Somme and she and uh, her younger sister, her younger sister was at university. They went up there one night partying, and uh, she decided in her wisdom to drive home drunk and uh, T-boned a tree. Thank might, have been a, might have been a favour if she didn't make it through by saying the kind of person that she is. And I don't say those words lightly. Horrible human being who is absolutely tortured and ripped off a guy in his most vulnerable time. Like, this guy's hurting. This guy even telling it after the fact. This, is, this story's hurting. <laughs> like, it's shocking. Guys, don't forget this shit. This is trauma. The tree was okay, and thankfully she was hurt. I mean, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. That's terrible. No. But you know what I'm saying. But no, she rode the car. absolutely towed the car. So that wasn't a good set up. Uh, the restaurant that was on the mountainside uh, eventually went tits up. I believe her family, uh, her dad was a bit of an alcoholic. <laughs> he liked to drink. He used to, he used to sit in his truck and just drink himself into a stupor and fall asleep and then wake up and then drive home. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that, that all went pear-shaped. Last I heard, she was down in Phuket and from what I was told, uh, she had a, a new boyfriend and you know, good luck to you, sir. <laughs> I hope you do better than I did. And the irony of it is, is I actually, before I made this video, I actually Googled um, my old house and it's still there, it's still there. 
And uh, I don't know how recent the, the photo is, but obviously it's, I've been here six years now, so it's, it's fairly recent. But uh, yeah, it's still there. And uh, yeah, miss those days. But every cloud has a silver lining. My silver lining was that because I was down here, I was renting, and then I decided I want to get a, a more of a long-term rental. And that's how I met Mo in the receptionist. So everything for me in the end panned out. We've been married now, I've been with her, what, six years now. So everything's fantastic. And, I'm, and that, you know, from that cloud is a... Uh, so he's got a married chick from there, the receptionist from somewhere, you know. Hopefully it works out for him. Six years, that's a decent stint. I'm sure she's going to chew him up and spit him out. She probably would have done it by now. But, you know, this guy went through that. So he's gone through a divorce. He's come over to Thailand, got absolutely just wrecked, right, in the worst way imaginable, and then gets on straight away to some other chick and marries her. <laughs> what the? Oh, good on him. He's on this guy, and I wish him all well with his channel. But oh, let's see what happens at the end of this story, guys. I've got a few minutes to go. Silver lining. But by sharing this story, I don't want any sympathy. I don't want any uh, any cruel uh, uh, remarks. I just wanted to be honest with you and just say, look, you know, I don't think people actually come out here looking to get uh, to fall in love. I think that's where we get it a bit wrong. I came out here with no intention whatsoever of finding a girlfriend, absolutely zero. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you are, you've all got feelings, you all think things, and we all want to be loved. You know, it's, it's not difficult. So when, you present, when you're presented with that situation, particularly if you've had, like I had, a very uh, bad breakup and everything was, was going pear-shaped for me, to then suddenly find myself surrounded by what at that time appeared to be fanta fantastic, you know, it was like amazing. Yeah, no, I can agree. It's easy to let your emotions get swept away. I agree. I, I, I talk about this guy all the time and I might have put him in my, my um, I did have put him in my True Stories video. His name's Larry. Good old Larry. He's not his real name. He's a really close friend of mine. So he went through that shocking divorce that I told you guys about. If you if you know where of it, just um, look for the um, the true Aussie divorce stories video that I made. It's in there. It's pretty it's pretty brutal. What did he do? So he got he went through all of that and he got on straight away with some other chick who was a single mum who had also cheated on her husband and he you know he was cheated on by his wife. And she just took him through this roller coaster, just up and down, just gaslighting him, just wrecked him over about a year and a half. He's still hurting from that. That was like two years ago. And he still talks about her and all this sort of shit. She chewed him up, spat him out, you know? Guys, they get sucked in. They get sucked into a fairy tale. He was talking about moving in with her and having a blended family and shit. You know, like, the women can prey on men's emotions and their vulnerabilities. Like, she had no intention of doing that stuff. She wanted him around and took him up through the highs and lows. And, you know, he, he took her around everywhere and bought her everything and did all those things and she was out banging other dudes as we know guys you know they're all trouble those dating app single mums most of them out banging getting slammed by many different guys while donahue's on you know we know that but he didn't and he still now refuses to believe that she, she was doing that but that's what i'm just trying to say guys get led astray guys do get led by their emotions especially when they're vulnerable men, men need company too and want company and i think women men, Men hurt more. Men, men, you know, especially vulnerable men, they get, you know, they get just ripped apart by these chicks. So that's why I'm not making fun of this guy. Like, this is a cautionary tale. This is a cautionary tale for you guys watching to say what can happen over there because it's, you see a lot of other channels, Passport Bros stuff, saying how good it is, how awesome it is. You're going to go there. You're going to get some submissive wife who is just like a robot. He's going to do everything you want. It's going to fuck you whenever you want. It's going to be a perfect maid. It's going to respect you, treat you like king of the house, blah, 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 blah. They don't tell you all these things that can happen. They don't tell you about how you get shafted, unalived over there, right? Like, there's so much crazy shit, so I'm going to start covering some of that stuff. You guys, what do you guys tell me? What else do you want me to cover? Put it in the comments. Like, I'd love to get your ideas. And you know, I do, I sit on this channel, I say, oh, you gotta cut them loose, you gotta let them go, blah, blah, blah. But it's hard, guys. And I speak from experience, it's hard. Yeah. You know, it's not as easy as I say. It's not as easy as some of the, the, the comments that we get where people say, you're just idiots, you should learn and walk away. It's not as easy as that. When you start playing with people's emotions, it's a very dangerous game. So, 
And also the other the other cloud the other silver lining to my cloud was I've got Ben and August my two dogs they still be Ben blessing Ben's been with me years. There you go. He's that's seen good. It all. I bet he, I'd love to be able to read a dog's mind. I'd love a dog to be able to sit down and talk to me because they just sit there and like he used to sit with his head on his on his paws just watching. And I bet he's sitting there oh, for God's sake, son, grow a pair of balls and leave her. And like I just didn't do it. So, but I'd love to say, mate, come and have a beer with me. Sit down. And, and just tell me, what did you make him? Uh, I'm gonna let it go. He's talking about having a beer with his dog, mate. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching this far. Hope you enjoyed this. It. Bit of a different flavour than what I've had on my channel. But as I said, I'm branching out. I want to. I want to bring a bit more value to you guys with live examples and things to talk about. And where I might not know something, um, you know, I'll, I'll bring on a video about someone who does know and has that experience. So thanks, guys, for watching. See you in the next one.